थ्री डेकेट पोल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन कमेडी स्पीच स्पीकिंग इन बिटवीन एनी क्वेश्चन फॉर मी Okay, Synergetics is a three-decade old organization. We are an emerging technology uh, organization, and we focus on emerging technology because we believe that emerging technology is the source which helps in resolving most of the problems of our customers by providing them with uh, cutting-edge uh, solutions aligned to emerging technology. Whether it is making the pressures billable, whether it is certifying the laterals, whether it is helping the customers in setting up uh, practices. and also uh, reskilling their uh, lateral uh, bench strength that they have uh, we for the past 30 years have been hired by oems to evangelize uh, technology on their behalf to top gsis like uh, capgemini lnt tech mahindra infosys wipro so this is a credentials for us because if an oem can believe in our uh, services i think that's a commendable job that my me uh, my team has done throughout the 30 years to obtain this credentials for them we are a global organization and we have about 150 smes that are uh, associated with us and we have our presence in india europe us uh, uh, middle east and africa uh, as i said oems engage us and we uh, do evangelism on behalf of our oems so we have been interested with some of the very prestigious Uh, engagement whether it is being their west zone partner for azure whether it is uh, roll out of their aspiring architect program whether it is uh, their uh, visual studio team suit program or sql architect team program we have done all of that and we have come out with flying colors to brief you about the two speakers that we have for today's session we have uh, mr om prakash pande and we have uh, mr sonu satyadas uh, om prakash pande is our avp uh, technology uh he has been with the organization for past 25 years and uh, he has been the person who has uh, not only skilled people but he is also actively or uh, rather i'll say uh, uh, centrally involved in working on a few applications deploying of application of some of the uh, financial giants that are available in us so that along with the knowledge he also has the implementation knowledge and today is what he is going to showcase that in the forum today as far as mr sonu satyadas is concerned he is our uh, lead when it comes to uh, .net and ai he is a champion with synergetics for last 12 plus years uh, he has cross functional ex expertise uh, when it comes to technology uh, starting with maybe uh, .net uh, to open stack to azure to ai anything i mean you can ask him anything and he'll have answers to all of your queries so that's the kind of expertise that we are carrying for today and i hand over the session to mr om prakash and to mr sonu to first of all brief you through the agenda and then uh, kick off the session all the best i wish you a happy learning to everybody involved thank you so much thank you vijay <coughs> uh, hi everyone i hope i am audible to all of you So, okay, thank you. Yeah, hi everyone. Uh, today, uh, me and my colleague, uh, Mr. Om Prakash, is going to uh, give you a brief idea about or introduction about the data and AI solutions and the certifications on this data and AI solutions. So, as far as concerned, the data and AI solutions, I'm going to talk about. the uh, real world examples of data and ai solutions so why it is important in our day to day uh, life in our business applications and i will showcase you a couple of uh, ai related uh, services that we can that we can uh, leverage in uh, uh, the cl azure cloud platform so uh, let me share my screen please confirm you are able to see yeah your screen is visible okay yeah so here i'm going to talk about the data 
and AI services primarily. So let's understand some of the use cases where the data and AI services are used and why it's so important for the business uh, in today's world and some of the AI capabilities in the Azure platform. So coming to the AI technologies. So now we know we are living in an era where AI is everywhere. So we are using AIs knowingly or unknowingly in, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, right? So organizations uh, use us AI for building their applications, uh, engaging their customers, and for many other uh, uh, business-oriented activities. So you can see uh, organizations are using or business uses AI for primarily uh, for uh, enhancing the customer experience or retaining their custom customers. Like most of the uh, applications and services today, we build with the help of AI or we use uh, AI to enhance the customer experience because uh, the traditional uh, legacy applications customers uh, when they use they feel a bit bored using such kind of application but when they go with the ai enabled applications they are much satisfied and they will get a good experience while using this kind of applications so if you see most of the organizations are now building applications that is i can say ai enabled applications for their customer experience for for enhancing the customer experience and customer retention and yes organizations also uses ai for some other purposes yes for in, for uh, uh, increasing the revenue and for reducing the cost for yes if you say okay uh, mostly the uh, goes goes into uh, infrastructure maintenance, upgradations, and uh, fault detection. So in that cases, we can use AI for identifying the faults and correcting these faults be before that it occurs, so that they can reduce the cost in the uh, organization's environment. So business continuity is another reason. And also we use different other uh, scenarios or use cases why we are using the AI applications in our business. So if you consider, we can uh, see organizations are uh, using the AI services in different domains or different industries. If you consider, we use this in the pharmaceutical and healthcare industries, manufacturing industries, media and architecture, interior design, engineering, automotive, aerospace, defense, medical, electronics, and many other areas. So if you see, so very simple example, I can say if you go to the uh, IKEA or uh, Flipkart kind of applications, and if you go and purchase a uh, a product for uh, uh, for your uh, hall. So if you you can say they will give you an option that okay you can uh, use the AI service to check whether this uh, product suits your room or it will uh, it will be good for your room or not. So that you can uh, take a photo and uh, upload it into this, or you can use the camera in real time and uh, set the, whether this product is suits your uh, room atmosphere so that you can directly see because it's a part of ai so it uses the ai technologies or if you are uh, purchasing a, a dress so whether it suits your uh, body fit the physique that you can check by uploading your photo or taking your photo and uh, 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 using that uh, same cloth within with your body within your body without wearing it you can identify whether it suits for you or not so you can see 
now we are using this AI services for creating the uh, uh, marketing campaigns, the banners, the uh, captions. You can also see many other industries we are using it for uh, in the pharmaceutical areas. We are using it for drugs identification. Right. So if you see every areas, every domains, we are using the artificial intelligence. So artificial intelligence is now a part of our life. It can be in the form of uh, artificial narrow intelligence, artificial uh, super intelligence or artificial general intelligence, right? So it, it, may be, it, it may be in the form of a simple device that Daily, we are using our mobile phones. In the mobile phones, also we are using the artificial intelligence. But what is running behind this? So behind this, there is an artificial intelligence model. So we'll talk about. I'll tell you about the artificial intelligence models later, and I will show you how these models are developed using the Azure Cloud Services. So if you Look, we are using the AI in the healthcare industry for predictive diagnostics, personalized the treatment plans. Means if you want to use uh, uh, the, the predictive diagnostic, means you can use the AI algorithms for analyzing the medical images. So usually we go to the doctor and the doctor will check your uh, X-rays or other MRIs and he will be uh, telling you, okay, that you have this problem. But now it is not required that you can upload your uh, MRI or X-rays into the artificial intelligence application, and it can tell you that you have this problem or you have this disease. And you can also upload your uh, uh, medical conditions or medical prescriptions and other details to the AI based applications and it can tell you that you need a, a the you have to do the further the diagnostics and you have to have this medicines and other things based on your uh, history of uh, treatment. So that means we can use AI in the healthcare industry. For example, you can see the IBM Watson for oncology assist doctors in cancer treatment decisions. So that is a real world example. So we are using people use us IBM Watson for oncology for detecting or taking the uh, cancer treatments. And we also have AI in our finance sector. So these AI applications can predict what will happen in the stock market. So we all are investing. We are all uh, investing into the stock market, buying shares, but we cannot predict when it goes up and when it goes down. But yes, based on the trend analysis, the AI application tell you it can tell you that okay, you can invest on this particular share because yes, as per my prediction, this share value can go up and you can make profit, right? So similarly, you can also use the AI for fraud detection and that that is one of the main threat that we face in the finance sec uh, sector so we can we will get lots of uh, uh, calls regarding the uh, credit card and debit card and there are lots of illegal transactions happening with our credit card so we we are not aware that our card will be used somewhere so the card will be with us but yes somebody else will be using our card so this kind of frauds can be detected with the artificial intelligence. So you can see an example that JP Morgan Chase uses AI to analyze the market data and optimize, uh, optimize the trading strategies. So that they are using the AI assisted tools for the trading the strategy analysis. AI is also used in the agriculture industry for precision farming. That means you can use the drones with the AI-based sensors 
for monitoring the health of the crop if there is something uh, some issues within this uh, uh, crops you can immediately take an action so there is no farmer required to go and investigate all these things but yes the ai based uh, drones or the the ai sensor connected drones can go and detect these things it can do the soil quality test and the importance or the need for irrigation so these all can be done automatically with ai based solutions so ai based uh, applications ai based uh, devices can work together to uh, implement this crop disease prediction so ai can predict what happens if uh, in, a, in, a, in a particular season or in a particular uh, climate conditions what kind of diseases can come into the crops so that can be predicted by the ai system because it is analyzed it is it is trained with the uh, the, the past data it is trained with the historic data of such conditions so based on that analysis it can tell you that okay if this climate condition comes or if this kind of weather conditions this kind of disease can come if you see there is there are john d's ai powered tractors optimized planting and harvesting so the, the farmer need to go and do that there is an ai assisted tractor which can do this work so you just need to go and start the device and go so this will do things for you okay so the, for the planting and harvesting all can be done using this particular ai enabled tractors so that means we are using ai in our agriculture industry not only for uh, planting or harvesting or disease predictions or for soil testing irrigations uh, means understanding the need for irrigations so in many other areas we are using it for customer service this is one of the common use case of artificial intelligence but because now if you consider suppose if you suppose if you go, if you want to take an appointment with a doctor usually you will call uh, the hospital over a phone and there will be a staff who will attend the call and tell you okay this doctor will be available this time and you can take an appointment but yes now we don't need to go and make a call to the hospital we can just go to the application which is provided by the hospital or you can go to the website of the hospital directly you can communicate with a chat assistant which is a virtual assistant and you can immediately schedule a schedule an appointment with this with a particular doctor if the doctor is available or we can see even uh, IRCTC is one of the ticket booking website for uh, Indian Railway you can see there is a chat assistant that can help you for booking the tickets cancelling the tickets and other uh, booking or cancellation related activities so what kind of help you need you can ask the virtual assistant and the virtual assistant will be capable to answer your queries we can also use this ai services for analyzing the feedback of the customers and improve the products and services so i can tell you an example that if you go to flipkart or amazon kind of uh, shopping applications yes you want to purchase a product but you want to see what is or what are the feedbacks that the customers has given for this particular product so if you see there can be hundreds of comments or reviews given by the customers but you may not have time to go through all these reviews but you want to know what are the negative feedbacks given what are the problems or uh, di disadvantages of this uh, product or if you buy this product what are the problems okay so you can go and check the negative feedback but how will go and find out the negative feedbacks only so what you can do you can go to the site and filter the feedbacks by choosing the negative 
feedback option. So it means from, from that hundreds of feedbacks, it can filter out the negative feedbacks and give you. So how it is doing, the application is going to do a sentiment analysis. From the given feedback, it can analyze whether it is a positive feedback or a negative feedback. So based on that, the vendor or the producer who are, is uh, running this business, he can improve the products and services for the upcoming uh, uh, products or upcoming customers. So Amazon's Alexa and Google assistants are widely used as virtual assistant. This is an example for the artificial narrow intelligence. So we are all using the Amazon's Alexa or Google Assistant. So whenever we talk, it can type or whenever we talk, it can uh, do some actions for uh, switching on the AC or switching on the TV or even for room cleaning, we can use the AI enabled devices. So these all AI for the customer service. So if you see AI in retail, there are recommendation engines means when you go and purchase a product it can suggest you okay if you buy this products you can also purchase this product as well because people who buys this particular product will also buy the other product so there are recommendations so that you don't need to go and use an identify the challenges of this using this product. You can go and purchase the other product which always goes with this product. Right, so because that is provided or that recommendation engine in that application will suggest you. Or if you take an another example, if you go to a, a restaurant or if you order online for a food, Zomato or Swiggy or that kind of applications. So usually you like a particular product, uh, product means you like a particular dish and you order this every time. So next time when you open this application, it can tell you, okay, there, there is an offer running in this product or there is uh, this product is available in this uh, restaurant. You can order this. So it can give you the suggestions based on your personalized uh, conversations or personalized experiences. Inventory management, the AI optimizes the stock levels, reducing the waste and improving the supply chain efficiency. Means we can use the AI to manage the stock levels. So usually when what happens if you go to us in, in, a, in a very lower level, we can think if you go to a medical store. So they always keep a note of uh, the medicines whenever they dis give this medicine to a uh, uh the, the patient or the the customer if the stock level is low they immediately write into a book because they have to order this in the next order so that is not required now now if you use an ai enabled application whenever the stock level goes below a particular level it can automatically place an order for that particular medicine or if at least if you if it does not want to place an order automatically, at least it can give you a notification to the shop owner or the person who is running the business that okay this product stock is stock level is low and you can go and order this, right? So Netflix recommendation system keeps us hooked. Uh, on Bingo watching means if you see uh, uh, Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hotstar kind of application, they always give the recommendations uh, about the movies and TV series. So, for example, if you continuously watch horror movies or action movies, so they understand that you like more horror or action movies. So whenever a new movie comes in that, that particular genre, it will tell you that, OK, there is a movie at least on this particular genre then you can go and watch it, right? So that are some examples of the recommendation engines. And if you see in the education and research, what is the importance of AI? 
in uh, in the education and research yes if if your uh, kid is going to the school and learning something and coming back but after that he is having some doubt while doing the homework or something else to whom he will contact maybe the parents may be not aware about the uh, the, the the topic or the teacher is unavailable during that time so how he can or who will be there to help him so you can have a virtual assistant who act as a tutor can help the student in his education he can for completing his homeworks for clarifying his doubts and other things so now you can see there are lots of ai enabled educational applications which provide virtual tutors there are learning uh, curriculums created by ai so it will automatically uh, assess your students uh, uh, what's uh, the excellence level so how much he scored what is his score and based on that what suggestions it can give suppose he is very uh, weak in a particular subject so what are the areas you want to improve so that all recommendations can be given based on the uh, assessment reports so that is that are some examples of uh, uh, ai tools that we typically use in our educational systems also for researchers who usually they go and do research in libraries they use different uh, books and do the research for collecting the data but now the ai enabled systems can easily provide the data because these ai enabled systems are trained with the millions of the data millions of data available in the internet so they can provide the required data for the research scholars as we have understood ai is now everywhere whether it is healthcare or defense or uh, manufacturing or education or agriculture it's very very important but what is running behind the ai all the ai systems uses a kind of uh, ai model or machine learning model these machine learning models are using or it is trained with a set of data maybe millions of data used to train this model and this model uses some algorithms to understand the patterns on that particular data for example if you provide the data about the weather informations the model is capable to understand the patterns in that particular data and can predict what will be the weather tomorrow right so how this is happening so how we can build our own model suppose if an organization wants to create their own ai system what is required so primarily they must have a set of data large set of data to train this model so where this data is available how we can make this data ready for the ai systems that my colleague will tell you what are the different data services available in azure and how we can prepare this data for the ai and ml services but yes if you have a set of data available you need to use this data to train this model and build this ml model and publish this model and consume it so first step in this process is to identify the problem so what problem you are trying to solve with this ai system so yes we i have to go and build an ai system it's not possible so you have to go and identify what problem you are trying to solve with this ai system once you identify the problem then you have to get the relevant data to train this model because 
for building a recommendation system you cannot go and get the data about healthcare industry or some other uh, data so data means you have to have the relevant information to train this model so once you get the data you have to make this data ready for this ai applications for that you use some data analysis data engineering services to prepare the data so that this data will be ready to use in our ai systems once your data is ready you can use some kind of machine learning services to train this model so this machine learning services can uh, use this data and process this data with some kind of algorithms and then generate a machine learning model and this machine learning models can be deployed as a service which can be then consumed inside your application means you can integrate this ml models within your applications and later you can obviously monitor the model's performance so whether this model is giving predictions or giving suggestions as expected that is what uh, the monitoring service is going to do so if you want to build such a ai service in azure we have different uh, services we have the azure ai services which is the, we can say it's a unified platform for building the complete ai solutions so whether you want to create a machine learning model or a deep learning model or a generative ai model or you want to customize the uh, ai models or you want to fine tune the models all things can be done inside the ai services platform so if you go to the azure ai services studio or azure ai studio which is a platform for building and customizing your ai models azure synapse analytics and azure databricks are the services that you can use to prepare your data for the ai ai and ml services and azure machine learning is a service that helps you to build the machine learning models yes if you are not an expertise or if you are not an expert in doing uh, programming or doing the uh, uh, coding no worries you can still go and use the ai uh, sorry uh, machine learning service in azure to build your own machine learning models if, or if you are a programmer who knows python you can go and write the code for building your machine learning models i can show you a very very quick example of machine learning studio here if you go to the azure portal you can simply go and create a machine learning service so here i have already provisioned a machine learning workspace so this machine learning workspace in azure provides the environment for building the machine learning models so you can build this machine learning models with the help of a machine learning studio so you can simply launch this machine learning studio here so i have already launched this studio here you can see there are different uh, activities you can do with this machine learning studio suppose if you want to create a prompt flow or you want to create a ml model by writing your own python script and choosing your own data set you can do that or if you are not an expert still you can go and use the ml studio for building the models with the help of automated ml so automated ml will help you to create the machine learning models just in in some clicks for example if you want to create a machine learning model you can simply create an ml job select the uh, parameters provide some name for your uh, job means machine learning job provide a name for your experiment because you have to train the model and validate this model so you can give a name for the experiment 
then you have to go and specify the data. So why data is so important? Because the, the machine learning models understand the patterns in the data so that it can predict something new or it can predict uh, the, the results whenever the user provides a similar information because it is understanding the uh, patterns from the data which is provided at the time of uh, training. And when we use this model or at the time of prediction or validation, when the user provides some data, it will do the prediction and give you the result. So here you can see, you can select what kind of uh, machine learning task you are going to do, whether it is a regression or a classification or time series forecasting and so on. So if you want to calculate some kind of numerical predictions, like uh, what will be the temperature or what will be the production unit count or that kind of numerical value predictions, you can just use the regression. So here I can show you a simple example of bike rentals. So bike rental scenario means there is a bike rental uh, organization who wants to uh, rent their bikes for the end customers. But how many bikes they have to rent per day or they have to make ready for every day? It depends on the different parameters. Sometimes the weather, humidity, temperature and other things are uh, deciding how many bikes will be rendered in a day. So based on these informations, we can predict, okay, tomorrow if the weather is this, or if the temperature is this, or if the humidity is this, these many bikes we need to arrange because there is a prediction that these many bikes are, will be rendered. So for that, we have to make the data ready. For that, if you want, you can go and import your data set, like can provide your data set here and what kind of data you are providing. It could be a tabular data or a table data. You can get the data from different data services. It can be extracted from the Azure storage or relational databases or from the local files as a CSV file, you can upload it or from the web URLs. If it is already accessible from a public URL, you can go and specify the URL or some other Azure data services you can use. So in case if you are going with the web URLs, you can simply specify the URL here. Suppose I can take you an example here. This is a URL which provides a sample rentals data. Right, and it is just doing the data <clears throat> preparation. As you can see, it is extracting the data and showing some informations that how you want to process this data. So we can say that, okay, only first file has headers in this. So rest of the informations are data. So, okay, so it's not. Okay, so here you can see the data and we can specify that only the first file has the headers and then you can go next and specify what are the different parameters we have to consider for training this model. So we can select all these parameters like whether day, month, year, season, holiday, weekday, temperature, humidity, and weather, uh, sorry, wind speed and other things. So we can take all these parameters and create a data set. So I have already created a data set here, as you can see this. Now I can select any one of this data set and go ahead and configure. So what do you want to predict? So in that rentals, the number of bikes to be rented, that is the target column we want to predict. And you can also configure the different other parameters, like what kind of algorithms need to be used. As you can see, there are different uh, uh, algorithms models need can be selected random forest or light with gpm and all and you can also specify how you want to split your data for training and validation so it will be using 90 percent of your data 
for training and 10% of the data for validating it. So all you can specify here and just click next and specify the compute means for doing this machine learning operations, you need a compute. So what kind of compute you can use? So you can simply select serverless and what should be the compute capacity or compute type, the VM type that you are going to use you can select and next and start the training job. So, so simple for implementing a machine learning model. So you can see I have already created a machine learning model here, which the training in which the training is completed and I have already got the result. So this is the result I got and I can go and publish this model as a web service. Suppose if I have done my training and validation, I can go and publish this model so that the end users can go and consume this. So if I go and publish this model, I can simply select this model and publish it as a web service. So it will ask you what's the name of the service and how you are planning to deploy it. Are you planning to use an AKS compute or ACI container instance? And once you click the publish or deploy, and simply start deploying your service in the Azure cloud. Once the deployment is completed, you will get the deployed service instance here. You can go and test it here itself. So this is this is going to be the URL for accessing your machine learning model. So now if you want to consume and test it here, you can provide a sample data. So you can see this is the sample data. You can update this or I can I have some sample data available. Let me use this one. So this is the sample data. I can put it here. So we can say the day, month, year, season, holiday, temperature and other parameters already here. So if I submit this data, the model will tell you what will be the number or number of bikes required. So 392 is a prediction. So that means 392 bikes need to be arranged because according to this data, 392 bikes can be rendered on that particular day, right? So that is what the prediction it makes. So I just quickly uh, taken you through the process of automated ML, but anyway, understand this machine learning studio help you to build your machine learning models on the Azure cloud. So this is what I have showed you. The machine learning studio can help you to build, train and deploy the models with Jupyter notebooks using built in support for open source frameworks and libraries. So you can simply go and select the libraries and tools provided by the machine learning studio to build the machine learning models. Create models quickly with automated machine learning for tabular text and image data. So this is what I have sh showcased you, how we can build the machine learning models without the expertise. Means if I'm not an expert in doing data processing, writing the codes, uh, selecting the algorithms, no problem, you can use the automated machine learning. Design, compare, evaluate, and deploy your prompt for large language model based applications with a prompt flow. So, if you are using generative AI, that is large language models, you can even create prompt, better prompt using the prompt flow. The machine learning studio also help you to create prompt flow for your lab language models. The another service offered by Azure for generative AI solutions is the Azure Open AI. Azure Open AI provide you the generative AI models offered by Open AI. Open AI is one of the uh, research laboratory that they, they create different kinds of generative AI models. So these generative AI models are now available in the Azure platform. You can go and deploy the open AI models like a GPT or DAL-E or Whisper. So they, you can go and deploy in your Azure region. So these are 
pre trained uh, generative models. But yes, you can go and customize them. I'll show you an example of how you can go and customize it with your own data so that you can make this AI models uh, domain specific. Suppose if I am running an application or I am running a business and these pre trained machine learning models or these pre trained generative models needs to use my organization data for answering the queries of the customers. That is what customization capabilities. Built in tools to detect and mitigate harmful use cases so users can implement AI responsibly. So the Azure Open AI also provide the content filters and moderators so that if somebody uses some kind, some kind of abusive words or kind of restricted data, the AI will automatically restrict or block such kind of usages and make your application AI responsible. Enterprise grade security is provided by the Azure while deploying the open AI solutions. We know that Azure is one of the largest cloud service provider and they can offer enterprise grade security and are back. Okay, and you can go and control the access to these AI models using your own private networks. All can be offered in, in the Azure Open AI services. Copilots is also a part of Microsoft Azure. You, I hope all of you are uh, aware about the GitHub Copilot, which is a code assistant. If you are a developer, you can use that in your uh, IDs like Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, or Eclipse, or any other uh, IDs that you are using to build the code. Or you can also use the Bing Copilot, which is part of the browser. Suppose usually if you want to go and do a search on a particular topic, instead of using the search engines, you can go and ask the Copilot to provide answer for that. So the Copilot uses the Open AI's uh, uh, GPT models to extract the information from internet and provide you as an answer. You can also see the copilots in Windows. So if you are a Windows 11 user, you can see a Windows copilot here. So you can uh, go and ask the copilot. This is the Windows copilot. You can go and ask the copilot uh, about anything that you want to understand. So instead of going to the browser and doing a search, you can immediately go and ask the co-pilot about anything that you want. So co-pilot is a service provided by Microsoft with their own models or their own data. But if you want, you can go and create your own custom co-pilot for specific scenario specific applications such cases you can use the azure ai studio which is a, a unified solution for building all kinds of ai application for example if you want to create a machine learning model you can use the ai studio if you want to create a generative ai model you can use the ai studio if you want to customize the generative ai model you can use the ai studio if you want to uh, fine tune your AI models, then you can use the Azure AI Studio. If you want to create a prompt flow, you can use the Azure AI Studio. If you want to create a custom copilot, still you can go and create or you can go and use the Azure AI Studio. So Azure AI Studio is Microsoft's powerful platform for building, evaluating, deploying the generative AI solutions. So it's not only building the models, you can also go and publish. You can go and customize the models and fine tune these models in the Azure AI Studio. I can show you a very simple example here. Okay, uh, I'll just explain about the Azure AI search as well so that you will understand. So Azure AI search is also a Microsoft AI solution for data mining. So typically, if you have a database that contains a very large volume of data, or if you have a set of files, 
maybe a PDF, Word documents or something else that contains large set of data. So extracting information from these data sources is very, very difficult because you have to either write an SQL query or you have to use some kind of file read solutions for reading the data from the files. Instead of that, you can use an AI enabled search engine or AI enabled search service, which we can call as Azure AI search. It can index the data from different data sources, maybe from databases or from files or from external sources. So the data can come from anywhere. The Azure AI search can go and extract information from these data sources and use some AI capabilities for analyzing the sentiment, for translating the uh, data, translating the text from one language to another language. So you can use some kind of AI capabilities at the time of uh, making the request. So suppose if you want to query for some data, you can make a query to the search index created by the search service and the search service will use the AI capabilities uh, to extract the information from the, uh, the data sources that may come from a file or it may be come from a database. OK, and it will give you the response in the form of JSON data back to the user. So we can use this AI service services to customize your generative AI models. For example, I can show you an, a simple example. Here is the here is the Azure AI Studio. As you can see, this is the Azure AI Studio, which provides the uh, services for building the AM, uh, models. Suppose if you are planning to create AI based solutions like a machine learning studio, you can launch from here the language studio, speech studio, vision studio, custom translator. That means all kind of AI uh, solutions you can uh, do from the Azure AI studio. And suppose if you want to create the prompt flow, or you want to fine tune the generative AI models that also you can do from here. So here I'm just going to demonstrate a very, very simple uh, scenario that we have different kind of models, open AI models available in Azure Open AI, that is in Azure AI Studio. We can go and deploy an instance of one of these models. Suppose if I want to deploy an AI model, not only the AI Azure Open AI model, there are many other models provided by Meta, Google, and other services. You can see here there are hundreds of models available. So, which model you want to deploy, you can select and deploy an instance of that particular model. So, here you can see I can select an Azure Open AI model that is GPT 35 Turbo 16K and confirm the deployment of that. So I'm not doing that because I have already deployed this here. You can see there is a GPT-35 Turbo 16K model is deployed. So this model is a pre-trained model, which means it is already trained with the millions of data available in the internet. So you can go and ask the model anything, I mean, about anything in the world. So it can go and answer that. but. The problem which I found here is, so I am running an organization. So I have a travel uh, agency. Its name is Margis Travel. And the Margis Travel is providing uh, hotel accommodations in various countries. So they have tie up with different uh, hotels in different uh, countries. So if you go to New York, there are some hotels, which is having the tie up with Margis Travel and you will get a special discount. Or if you go to Dubai, there is a, a set of hotels or a number of hotels 
which is having tie up with the Margis travel. They can uh, provide services for its customers. But if I go and ask the model, yes, I am planning to go to New York. Can you suggest some good hotels? Yes, the GPT model or the model which I have can tell you, okay, you can go and stay in this, this hotels. But these hotels may not have a tie up with Margis Travel. But because Margis Travel is providing service through some specific hotels only. So when the customer of the Margis Travel ask the model or ask the chatbot where I can stay if I go to New York, then this model needs to go and answer yes. And Margis Travel is offering the stay in these hotels and these are the list of hotels we are providing you can go and stay in any one of this hotel so how i can provide my organization's data to the ai models for that we can go and inject our custom data to the generative ai models if you go to the playground you can see here, I have already configured the custom data here. So we can see a tab called uh, add your data. And here I have already configured a search index here. The Azure AI search index is here, configured here. So this, this search index is extracting the information from PDF documents. And this PDF document contains the list of hotels offered by Margis Travel. So now if I go and ask the model, okay, I am planning a trip to New York. Can you suggest some hotels or accommodation? So if I ask the model, the model is supposed to provide information about Margis travel. Can you see now it's not giving the generic list of hotels. It is giving the list of hotels provided by Margis travel in New York. You can see the Manhattan Hotel, the Grand Central Hotel, the Park Hotel. These are the list of hotels provided by Margis travel. And this information is coming from a particular PDF document which I have provided at a, as a data source. So this is an example for customizing the built-in generative AI models. So I have done it through the Azure AI Studio. So this is what I said. The Azure AI Studio is a platform which you can use to build, customize, and deploy your AI solutions. It can be the ML models, prompt flow, or fine tuning the models or customizing your generative AI models. All can be done in a single unified platform. That is Azure AI Studio. So, so far I was discussing about the AI services offered by Azure. Now my colleague will help you to understand what are the different data solutions and certifications available in the Azure. So and now I would like to uh, hand over my mic to Mr. Om Prakash. He will help you to understand the data solutions on Azure and the certifications on this platform. Hello, Mr. Om Prakash, are you there? Yeah, I'm there. Thanks, Onu. Let me share yes. my screen. Am I audible to you on? Yes, yes. Thanks a lot. Let's proceed ahead. Thanks a lot, Sunu, for providing a lot of details in terms of various use cases from perspective of AI, various case study details. I have also shared some of the links on the chat. You all can go through that. My name is Om Prakash Pandey. I'm AVP Delivery at Synergetics. 
which has already introduced both of us. As part of the details which we are going to discuss. As part of my set of resources which I'm going to talk about. Is more to do with data analysis services on Azure. Now one of the services Sonu sir has already mentioned about and he has showcased a complete example on the same. There are plenty of other services as well, which one needs to be aware about. And like he was showcasing various details, once it comes to your data, there could be different type of data resources that we have different set of formats. It could be structured data, it could be semi-structured data or unstructured data. When it comes to current applications, latest app formats that we have, a single data source may not be the best solution here. One would need to have polyglot solutions. Polyglot primarily would mean having combination of different data sources, different data stores, which could be structured, semi-structured or unstructured in nature. From RDBMS point of view, which has been the legacy, or I would say uh, more prominently used, highly dependent in terms of asset properties, right? That is one type of data store. Apart from this, if you look at the feedback, social media kind of content which is being shared, these are all semi-structured document-based stores, document-based data that we have, which may have some, uh, some schema mapping. Most of them are schema-less in nature. So if you look at unstructured data, images, blob stores, Right now, like Sonu sir showcased these details, what he was talking about is once it comes to decision making, once it comes to uh, capturing sentiment details, right? You cannot expect the customers to have data or a feedback being shared in a specific format. They can share data in any format that they want. As part of our job role, what we are supposed to do is we are supposed to capture that information process that details, generate relevant details out of it, right? which will assist us in making AI-driven decisions. One of the primary things that one can look at once it comes to our data store, like Sonu sir has been stressing upon a point, I am not prepared, I am, I don't, I'm not from a data background, right? So same way, we as people who are pushing in data or storing data, we may not be very sure when we are starting with. So which kind of format or what kind of data will be the data format will be best for us. So let's go ahead and uh, store anything and everything that we have within the unstructured data storage to begin with, right? So we can take ahead with blob storage where you can put, uh, where, where you can push all the contents, right? As and when, as we go ahead, we know how much is the data growth which is happening over a period of time, number of customers increasing, number of uh, requests increasing, right? We can go ahead with data lake store generation two, where we can have a hierarchical data being stored, correct? Data association between the unstructured data members as well. Apart from this, we can go ahead with Azure files, accessing data from anywhere, using SMB based data. So this, this SMB over here is server message blocks. Large chunks of data can be uh, shared and can be accessed from anywhere we want. OK, now many organizations like ours, where we're talking about learning services or learning systems, most of that data in terms of presentations, in terms of con contents that we have, they lie around in our file servers, right? Shared file environment. <laughs> the installation details that we have, all of them, these are lying around as unstory, uh, unstructured details. Now, keeping these kind of requirements in mind, Azure file will be one of the best ways to leverage upon this information, make these details accessible to different team members within our organization, right? Apart from that, 
one more option for semi-structured data that we have is Azure table storage, which is a key value storage. So looking at various scenarios that one would imagine within an organization, right? In terms of unstructured data or some semi-structured information, Azure storage will be very, very helpful in this context. If you look at the primary structure being used over here with storage account, we can have blob containers, we can have our tables, queues, and respective resources inside that. Second important member that we have over here would be our Cosmos DB. As our requirements are varying, and like I mentioned about polyglot persistence in my previous slide, once it comes to organizations, what we would be looking for is from perspective of, can I have something like multi-model data store? See, my primary focus is building up a cluster, building up a node of systems which I have in the backend, right? So depending upon the customer requirement, what I could do is I could go and create the use that nodes and store appropriate data within that. It could be a graph-based database. It could be a MongoDB. It could be a, a NoSQL kind of data store, right? It could be, say, Cassandra kind of environment, right? columnar store, so using number of NoSQL kind of data stores within one member, right? And depending upon my need, I can go and create a respective instance for that type, use appropriate APIs. So I have MongoDB API, Cassandra API, right? Azure Table APIs. So from a availability point of view, readability point of view across the globe, it becomes very, very simple for me to work with Cosmos DB. Now, once you have all this data being stored, what next? So you got all this information stored inside your uh, SQL database as a solution. You have stored for uh, structured data. For semi-structured data, we have made, made use of Cosmos DB. We have got that data stored over there. Once it comes to unstructured data solutions, you have your storage account where we have blob and all the information being saved. Just give me a second. Here it is. So as part of my data store, so one of the resources that we saw earlier was in terms of storage accounts, right? So you can see the contents over here in terms of containers, file share, using queues, tables. So we have all the pre-required structure and all the resources being saved over here. Along with that, you have a lot of operations that one could do from replication point of view, data protection, having inventory of these resources, having lifecycle management. So quite a few details. So as a learner, as we go ahead, we will be able to get these details inside that. I'm not getting into more details of all these members right now because we don't have enough amount of time on hand. Apart from this, we can have our Cosmos DB as a resource, right? So once it comes to NoSQL kind of data store, here we have different options available where we can go for different consistency models, strong consistency, bounded staleness. My darwaza ban kar de. We can have strong consistency, right? Bounded staleness. Sorry. So we have different options available here in terms of strong consistency, boundary staleness, our consistent, consistent prefix over here, and we have eventual consistency, right? So in terms of these options available, what one can do is we can leverage upon these members. We can look at these resources over here and ensure right consistency model and the replication strategy is being used. Now, once these data is being collected as a single place, what is the next step that we do? So next step over here would be using other Azure services over here in terms of Azure Data Factory, right? And as the name suggests, 
here what it can do is it can help us to orchestrate the data movement and transform data at scale. Right. So if you look at the key resources over here in terms of ingestion, in terms of data storage, right? So here, all this data that we are pulling from an external data source, whether it is on-premises environment or whether it is, whether it is uh, online resources, all this data will be pulled into a single place, which will be your ingestion. And once it is being done, we can make use of data factory and do the required processing by using Azure Synapse, right? Use Azure Synapse analysis. Some of you all who may have already worked with data warehouse earlier. This is primarily a data, a new era data warehouse solution where we can have appropriate modeling being done for these uh, for these members and we'll be able to generate respective machine learning models or other resources that we would require. Now, while these processing is being done in the back end, you'll see there is use of Microsoft Entra ID, which is the new name. The older name was Azure Active Directory. So all this processing will be secured. And in case we want encryption of data, we can make use of Key Vault services over here, which will help us do the required processing from perspective of data encryption in transit, right? So we have data encryption at rest using SSE, storage service encryption. We have uh, data encryption being done with, while it is in transit by using encryption keys. You can use certificates for that as well, right? And once this data is being processed, finally what we can do is we can generate appropriate data visualization using Power BI. So once it comes to Azure services, specifically from point of view, end-to-end -end data processing, starting from starting from ingestion to data ingestion and working with all the members over here, right? All these resources are possible at one place. OK, so here what one can see is an end to end solution over here. For all the elements starting from data ingestion to data processing, right? ETL based pipelines over here, extraction, transformation, loading of all that details and then final reporting being done, which will help the top management, which will help the thought leaders within the organization to take quick decisions on it. From now getting into the specific components behind the scene, which is taking care of all these members. So as part of this hierarchical data storage, we have Azure Data Lake as a service, right? Which will help us store or ingest different type of data whether it is streaming information, streaming data, ad hoc information. Right, and it also becomes as a data source for different members like Azure Data Factory or Hadoop or Stream Analytics. Right, so it becomes a data source for all these members. And once this information is being stored in data lake storage, I'm not sure how many of you are aware about that. Normal storage account has a limitation in terms of five petabytes. As part of data lake, there's no restrictions in terms of how much data one can store. And believe me, the pace with which the data storage requirement is growing day in, day out, right? With various uh, products and services being launched, feedback coming from people, various uh, team members joining our organization, they processing a lot of information, reading from a lot of online sources, creating repositories, doing research on within the organization, right? So you need a huge amount of data. And as far as data leak is concerned, this plays a very, very vital role in doing that. Now, one could say if, if the, I have a huge amount of data, it becomes difficult for me to organize it, work with it, classify it, 
not to worry. We have Microsoft purview for that. Maybe in some other session, I can talk about that in more detail, how we can do data classification, management, and do a asset creation, catalog creation by using Microsoft purview. If you look at another uh, important member over here, once it comes to our services, here we have Azure Databricks. Because see guys, we have been talking about storage of data. We have been talking about processing of data, ETL kind of operations. Uh, when you're talking about uh, the data warehouse, when, when you're talking about AI based processing, right? See all these process or processing required for machine learning services. All these things don't happen in air. It needs some kind of compute in the back end. Whether it is happening within on premises environment using self hosted agents or we create machines on the cloud. We install set of basic softwares on top of it. Correct. So all these kind of processing requirements or uh, data storage and data process data storage we have already handled now data processing. So data bricks is the one which is a cloud based big data and machine learning platform which will which is a fully managed kind of environment in the backend. So here you have your data bricks input output, which is optimized for the runtime engine. We have Apache Spark. We have our uh, options for serverless compute as well. So uh, since just since we're talking about serverless, almost every service, if I, I would not be wrong if I say that Microsoft is trying to associate this feature of serverless because at times we over provision compute resources, we under provision compute resources, right? And especially when we are starting off with creating the environment, we are not sure how much of compute power is actually required, right? So the best option to do that in, in that scenario would be begin with a serverless, okay? And have a consistent monitoring, which will help us understand how much of processing power is sufficient enough. Two core, four core, eight core, how much of RAM is good enough, right? So, or how much of requests we are getting based on that request response or processing expectations, you would come to know how much of processing power is needed. Then we can go ahead and provision specific set of machines, specific cluster uh, resources there and map it accordingly. So if you see the Azure data bricks over here, it supports details in terms of PyTorch, TensorFlow, SkyKit Learn. So entire ML runtime. Now one would say, Om Prakash, I, I can do it myself as well. Yeah, I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying rather than you having to do it, what will be the base environment, whether Unix or uh, Linux or which is, which is the best kind of OS for it, which runtime libraries are required, all these things is taken care by Microsoft in the backend. So our life as data engineers becomes much more easier, right? Our life as data scientists becomes much more easier. So I have a pre-built environment which takes care of my requirements from underlying processing power, underlying systems. I just have to go ahead like Sonu showed, Sonu sir showed you all, said that he went ahead and used the UI tool, loaded the CSV file, got the processing done using the prompt. He also got a response from it, right? At any point in time, he did not have to think about while I'm writing this prompt, will it get executed in the backend? How much of CPU, how much of RAM will be required for it? He didn't have to think about it. Same thing should be done for any kind of data modeling, any kind of resource modeling that you are doing, right? And that is what Microsoft Azure provides us, right? A beautiful, tension free, <laughs> well managed environment behind the scene where you can stick, focus on your algorithms, you can focus on the underlying statistics that we have and that and uh, we should get our required output here. While we are doing it, while we are managing that resource, the important member over here is, is it compliant? Because now we are talking about data. Now we are talking about the critical aspects within our system. Not to worry, it is having multiple compliances behind the scene, whether it is FedRAM compliance, HIPAA compliance, right? PCI, DSS compliance, ISO compliance, all these compliance policies have been taken care. 
I already mentioned about the security in the previous slide in terms of uh, key vault sec uh, security of data at rest, data in transit, right? I have already mentioned that. In terms of Synapse Analytics, right? This is the primary member that we have, which is providing a data modern, uh, modern data warehousing solution using different types of schema models over here, how one can work with it, how one can work with real-time analytics, data integration, machine learning solutions, right? Just give me a second. So if I go to my Azure environment, I was mentioning about Cosmos DB. Within Cosmos DB, I can create whichever resource I want. Right? Create appropriate resources within this. Go to Data Explorer. And you'll see AI being used in all possible scenarios, whether it is our platform, whether it is BI based environments, that is Power BI as an environment. So you'll see the implementation there as well. Even if you look at your Azure resources, right? Multiple places you have readily available templates made part of. AI enabled resources. You can mention your requirement and it will automatically create required data source in the backend. So I have two resources over here being provisioned. One is Azure Data Factory. And using this Azure Data Factory, this is a kind of environment that we get where we can go ahead and perform various transformations, create various resources over here, right? We can have integration with Synapse using Jupyter Notebooks, Spark job definitions. We have plenty of pre-built components over here, which will help us perform day in, day out activities, execution of a script, invoking web-based resources, right? Web hooks, integration with HD Insight, machine learning solutions, You have your machine learning execute pipelines that can be configured from here. And this can work with multiple data sets, right? So each data set here, we can specify where do you want to pull that data from? What are the options available for it? Right? So these would be the set of possibilities over here. And you'll realize a lot of this data is not only from Microsoft environment. There are a lot of third party resources, third party or online standard resources that we have where we can pull this data from. Similarly, we also have Synapse workspace over here. Right? So some of these Synapse resources will look similar to area that is creation of a pipeline creation of appropriate requests over here now the new things that we'll see over here would be in terms of the compute power or the way how the compute is being organized using sql pools your apache spark pools right your uh, data explorer tools right so these are the additional members that one can create over here We look at the pipeline creation over here. We can create our SQL scripts. So this is a much more organized kind of resource as compared to data factory. And you can have data factory also being mapped over here within Synapse Analytics.
while we are working with these resources. Now, one would say, Ograkash, you have been mentioning about data warehouse, right? And as far as this data warehouse is concerned, data warehouse is a OLAP based data store, right? Online analytical processing based data store, right? Which is historical data, data which is being stored for uh, multiple years or months or a period of time about products, services. What if my data is real time data? Right? Do you have any services within Azure which will help us map or work with real time data? So guys, once it comes to real time data, here we have stream analytics. In uh, today's context, a lot of information, whether it is streaming video, streaming text, streaming audio, right? And at times there could be multiple signals which are available, which are pooling in at the same time. Correct. Now all this data would be mapped in terms of IoT devices. Okay. All this data would be mapped in terms of I will be coming from IoT devices. It could be web logs, your click, click stream analytics, right? Geospatial analytics, drive, driverless vehicles. So a lot of the AI things that Sonusar was mentioning about, correct? Somewhere it has to be mapped in the back end, right? It has to be associated over here. And we should be able to process that information in real time. So we can have reference data, we can have real time scoring of these members. Right? So real time analysis and not just uh, analyzing, but also taking quick decisions on that. Right? So showcasing alerts or throwing some of the uh, critical results out of it. Correct? If if the end user wants to take some actions on it, it's, it's more actionable in nature, right? That's the most important aspect here in perspective of stream analytics, right? So real-time analytics of point-on-sale data for inventory control, for anomaly detection, right? So all these things can be done from a Azure stream analytics. So when we are looking at an end-to-end -end solution or when we are looking at different type of use cases within a given organization, right? Not one or two services will be helpful. We may have to use combination of these services over here. Okay, we need to use combination of these services together. So in terms of data storage, what type of data you would want to store, choose between that or use combination of that. In terms of data analysis, data processing, what would be set of services you're going to use? If your data is real time, then what is the option? If your data is analytical data, historical data, then which set of services to use? What are the respective outcomes that you want to generate? Right? Whether you want to make it uh, store it for future usage within Cosmos DB, or you want to see the immediate graph out of it using Power BI. Right? So all these bunch of services one can use one can uh, use together bring it together organize it orchestrate it and form a end-to-end -end solution okay so i hope this discussion helps you all to understand the details so we have synapse analytics where we have synapse sql for data storage apache spark for data processing and for writing specific queries whether it is sql queries kql kind of queries we can make use of Data Explorer. We can make use of Databricks for backend scalable Spark environment, SQL querying on Data Lake Analytics, having a complete cluster of machines for doing the processing, doing the data processing, having implementation of various pipelines over here. We still have support for earlier or legacy kind of environments, that is Hadoop. Edge base using storm based processing. We also have support for latest members like uh, Spark and Kafka, right? So Azure in HD Inside will help us support all these members. So wherever you're looking at Microsoft environments, Microsoft based resources or open source resources, both of them are supported over here. 
Now, while we have been working at different set of services, Microsoft also is, has provided a new single pane of access for all these members called as Microsoft Fabric. I would uh, prefer to name it as Microsoft Data Fabric because all these resources are working on a single environment, which is unified data foundation, which is one lake, right? And if you look at the components inside it, in terms of data integration, data engineering, data warehousing, data science, right? Real-time analytics over here, all these members are mapped with a single resource or single endpoint for communicating with all these services in the backend, which is Microsoft Fabric. As part of these resources, one could also understand details. What I mentioned earlier, just to quickly wrap up with those services and putting it together. So you have your Azure SQL, your on-premises database, which could be MariaDB, MySQL, PostgreSQL. If you want to migrate that onto Azure, you have a native support over here within Azure platform. For semi-structured data storage, we have Azure Cosmos DB. For unstructured data storage, we have Azure storage members that we mentioned earlier. And if you look at the data workloads over here, we have Azure Synapse Analytics, Databricks, and HD Insight. Just give me a moment. So there is a lot of details available for it. So you can check for primary details over here on analytics resources here. Storosar has already put some of the links over here. You can go through that as well. So this section will be the, what do you say, uh, a primary element to begin with in terms of understanding when to use which service, right? So this is a very good entry point for people to begin with understanding each of these services. I would say this is more a marketing kind of information, marketing kind of overview about each of these services, right? Helpful for sales, pre-sales audiences. If you're getting into the solutioning piece of it, now this is a very important link where Microsoft has discussed about all possible solutions, whether it is AI-driven solutions, whether it is data and analytics based solutions. So what are the options available for it? Azure databases, business intelligence. Now each of these solutions would have appropriate services behind the scene. So I can dig deeper for analytics based solutions. What are the options available? Right? We have solution members. Third resource, which we have over here is cloud scale analytics. So as part of this solution, what are specific services given by Azure? I was talking about Microsoft Purview. What Sonusar mentioned about was Azure Machine Learning, Databricks, Synapse Analytics, and Data Lake Store. So depending upon what kind of solution one would want to create, and you have appropriate solution architectures as well. So this is a second very important resource which one can look at from an architecting point of view. From development, deployment kind of perspective, we have another member over here, which is Azure documentation. Here we can find ample amount of resources, getting deep dive into each of these services, starting with step one, step two, step, th step three, how one can go and build these members over here. So all as essential details at one place. These are some of the reference links, which could be helpful for you all, especially people who are beginning with 
learning or who already have some knowledge in terms of data tools and want to understand the Azure perspective towards it and how Microsoft Azure provides deep dive into these areas. So this was a quick understanding of Azure services. I'm, I'm sure people would definitely want to learn many more things. Extremely sorry on that. We are we have a, a crunch on time right now. We also have our team members. You can put your request on the chat so we can organize deep dive sessions on each of these topics that we have. Now, apart from learning these uh, resources, learning these topics and applying them to our day in day out usage. What one would also want to do is. Understand the implementation perspective, uh, understand the certification perspective over here. Right. Because. After uh, learning all these topics, learning these technologies, unless we have a badge or unless unless we have a accreditation, right? It is not being recognized or we don't get that amount of value that we are that we should get within the organization. So keeping that kind of perspective in mind, certification plays a very, very uh, critical role. Along with this, as part of your uh, customer expectations. Certifications would be a prerequisite before we get a particular project. Right. So keeping that kind of expectations in mind, certifications will be a very, very important thing. So one of the links where you can check for that aka.ms Azure train cert deck. Here you can see all the certification details. Right due to lack of time and being specifically focused on data services, I will be discussing some of these certifications here and the roadmap which as an individual or as a learning team, we can pursue it, right? So let's take a look at that. If you look at the roles over here, when people are getting into certifications, right? They need to specify or stick to the roles that they are into, whether they are playing a role of database administrators right now, they are playing a role of data engineer, data analyst, correct? So based on these appropriate roles, they can pick up relevant certifications. So I, I don't have to mention this explicitly. So if you see this data integration pipelines, ETL processes, this is about data factory. Data cleansing and transformation, right? So DP203 would be the right resource for you. Similarly, if you look at data visualization, data reporting and summarization, your DP600 or Power Platform PL300 Power BI. That would be a right certification for it. So each of the role asks for a specific certification type. Database administrator, DP100, DP200. These are mapped towards database administration, right? Database backups, resiliency. So SQL database administration certifications would be a right select on these areas. So if you look at this slide here, this talks about DP300 as your database administrator, the newer release. Apart from this, enabling continuous value integration with people, processes, technologies, DP203, which I was mentioning about. For cloud migration point of view, we have DP050, 060. For data scientists, we have DP100. I don't want to mention about AZ900 or DP900 because these have now become a norm. Correct? So anybody who's a beginner or wants to understand what is a complete spectrum over here, these foundational services or fundamental uh, certification that we have will play a very, very vital role. Even for AI, we have AI900, which covers the primary background for artificial intelligence and various services that we have within Azure Maple to the Sea. Especially once it comes to data analyst, this is what I was mentioning about. PL300, DP500. DP500 is Power BI with more custom solutions 
mapping to the Azure environment. Right? So if you look at Microsoft certifications, there are plenty of details here. What I have done is I have highlighted some of the resources which are relevant from data and AI perspective. That is data scientist, associate, data engineer associate, database administrator, enterprise data analyst. We have data fundamentals, AI fundamentals, AI engineer associate, and Cosmos DB developer specialty. So you have special papers for AI and special papers for Cosmos DB as well. Right? So we can leverage on specific certifications. Now, people who are from developer background, right? Now, for developer background, we have AI 102, Azure AI engineers, cognitive services, computer vision, NLP, knowledge mining solutions, conversational AI, right? So, you want to create your own kind of chatbot solutions, or you want to do any kind of NLP processing, we can go for AI. 102 certification. Cosmos DB is a special paper for that, which is DP420. I think this, is, this will be the right slide where we have AI102, DP420, and DP500 together. Right? This is for data and analytics space. Fundamental certifications, I already mentioned about it. AI 900, DP 900. The one primary challenge that we face, generally once it comes to certification, I and I want to uh, address that. Once it comes to any of the certification resources, I, I'm just taking an example of AI 102 over here. What Microsoft has done is it becomes difficult for people to understand and before the exam say I have done too much of learning I have assimilated a lot of things from different sources now how do I finally prepare for the exam and get ready for it so there are a lot of pre-existing exam prep videos that one can go through we have AI 102 study guide or a relevant study guide for each of the papers right and most of the exams today if you'll see have a free practice assessment, right? So what synergetics as an organization would help you all do is prepare for the in, uh, prepare for the entire paper, do the entire implementation from a real world perspective, right? But specifically from exam point of view, we can refer some of these solutions given by Microsoft. And if we go to the study guide section, all the papers which I spoke about, whether it is AI 102, AI 900, or if it is any of the DP certifications, DP 100, DP 203, 300, Cosmos DP certification, Power BI, DP 600. So all, all study guides are being provided over here, which, be, which uh, becomes a key reference documentation before we appear for the certification. Right? So within Synergetics, what we do is the, the trainings that we deliver on certifications, they are keenly addressing all the points mentioned in the study guide. We ensure all these points are being thoroughly covered and people are ready for their exam. Right? So that's what we ensure at RN. That's all from my side. I'd want to check if there are any questions by anybody. Before I hand it over to Manish. Sonu sir has already mentioned some of the key details here. Thanks a lot, sir. Over to you, Manish. Manish, are you there? Uh, yes, Om Prakash. Yeah. 
वन मीटर या हेलो एम आई ऑडिबल यस मनीष यू ऑडिबल या थैंक्स ओम प्रकाश सर सो या थैंक्स एवरी वन फॉर जॉइनिंग इन सो एज वी कंक्लूड दिस एनलाइटिंग वेबिनार आई एक्सटेंड एट फील्ड ग्रेटिट्यूड टू ऑल फॉर योर एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेशन स्पेशल थैंक्स टू द एस्टीम स्पीकर मिस्टर सोनू सत्यदसा एंड ओम प्रकाश पांडे फॉर देयर इनसाइटफुल सेशन uh mr sonu you are expert is in real world exam uh, examples of data and solutions and the importance of data and ai skills in the modern workspace, workspace has uh, provided valuable invaluable insights uh, your passion uh, for the subject shines uh, through enriching our uh, understanding uh, mr om prakash your session on understanding azure data and ai services microsoft azure certification landscape in data uh, data and ai and building data and ai skill set have been illuminating your guidance in navigating azure landscape and skill development is greatly appreciated to our attendees uh, thank you for your engagement and contribution we value your feedback please share your thoughts on the session through the feedback link provided in the chat box the session recording will be available for the future reference uh hello <coughs> yeah so the session recording will be available for the future reference so subscribe to our youtube channel using the link provided in the chat box in the closing thanks to our speaker and attendees for making this uh, webinar a successful let's continue this journey for uh, learning together thanks everyone thank you manish thank, thank you. you thank you prakash thank you everyone for joining thank you everyone thanks onu sir thank you thank, thank you everyone please uh, fill feedback form before leaving it's valuable to us okay thank you thank you and subscribe our youtube channel for uh, recording so in day or two uh, we are uploading a uh, same recording on uh, our youtube channel so you can get uh, notified okay thank you thank you so much it was very insightful session thanks sonu and om prakash thank you Thank you, Ashutosh. Thank you.